he desires to meet with us today. Let's join together in singing this morning. With a shout of acclamation, and he'll take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration. Sings my soul, my Savior, not to How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, not to How great thou art. 
And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing it one more time, that chorus. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me at his voice, it trembles at his voice, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God, pick up these words, oh, and age to age. And all of time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. And he's here with us today. And in the presence. We're in his presence already this morning. Of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. I need to join the chorus today. In the presence.
in his presence this morning. And when we come into his presence, we invite him to speak and minister to our hearts. We're going to sing the chorus one more time, and maybe there's something that you just need to bring into his presence today. Maybe a heart that's broken. Maybe a trouble or a trial that's pressing in on you today. Maybe to pray for the salvation of loved ones. Whatever it may be, this is what we call our family altar time. It's a time just to come and talk to the Lord. Pour out your heart to him this morning. For his presence is here. into your presence even now. So grateful that you promised to meet with us whenever we gather together. And Lord, we need your presence today just like every day. I pray, Lord, you would help us to clear our minds of all of the, maybe the struggles it was even just to get here this morning to just give us a peace and a calmness in our spirits. Help us, Lord, just to take these moments and to focus on hearing from you, letting you speak to us in these moments ahead. Father, I pray that you would be with our work and witness team as they shortly will begin traveling back from Charlotte. Lord, you knew all of the holdups and everything that occurred, and you were with them, and you kept them safe, and you provided, and we thank you. Father, I just pray that this morning, hearts would be mended. Our spirits would be more than stirred, but changed that we believe and we trust completely in you. Take these next moments we have together. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and your grace that reaches to where we are. And we we'll give you glory in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When peace like a Yeah. 
Amen. It's all right. Bless you, Patty. Making my rounds, and I was. I like to get everything done in one day. I completely wear myself out. I would go to Sam's and all of those places out there, and I am finished with South Ridge for a, until a few more <laughs> weeks. But I was um, at Walmart, and a lady started talking to me, and, and we were in front of the Velveeta casing <laughs> and, and standing there and all of the people around. and and. She started telling me that she had just been to the doctor and she wasn't able to drive herself. She had to depend on someone else. And that um, she whispered to me that she, they had found brain lesions. And she was very concerned, of course, about that. And uh, I asked her what her first name was and she told me and, and I just knew God didn't want me to stop there. He wanted me to pray for her right there. And I, I asked her if I could pray with her. And you know, people are so receptive anymore. They want to pray. And I, I, she reached out her hand and we held hands. And I didn't, I didn't try to be quiet. I didn't hunker down and try to say, Dear Heavenly Father, I just, other people could hear what I had to say. And we had a good prayer. She was so thankful and, oh, it was such a wonderful time just to be able to say, you know, not that it's any, I, I think it's great. For me, it's great because I am, a, I am more backward than I am forward. <laughs> so it was something that I did and I felt like, oh, yes, I can do this. I did this. And so I went on to Hobby Lobby and met another lady there, and she was telling me about her. Her son was 42 years old, and he'd already had three heart attacks, and I asked her if I could pray with her. And we prayed right behind the material counter there in, <laughs> in Hobby <laughs> Lobby. And she was so very grateful and thankful. I think there are people out there just wanting someone right. to just come and say, can I pray with you? And I'm, I'm, I'm trusting the Lord will continue to help me to be able to have that. I'm going to do this, and Amen. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to do it. Amen. And I'm Amen. so grateful. I am. I have to say, I'm very proud of myself for doing that, but not, but not in a, um, you know, a way of just trying to get up and brag about it. It's, it's not that. It's just the fact that God gave me that strength to be able to do that. I right. love Him. There is no reason why I should keep my mouth quiet because I do love him so much and I want them to know there, uh, there are other people that I absolutely will pray with them. And I, I'm so grateful to God. He is so good to me. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed. God is faithful. And when we respond, he gives us the words to say. 
He gives us the ability to speak when we are timid. But we are so grateful and we will lift up those two needs to the Lord as well. That may have been just the encouragement that was needed in those two lives. And what if Patty would have said, oh, that's embarrassing. You can't pray in Hobby Lobby or near the Velveeta Isle. <laughs> you know, that's what Satan would want us to do is say, oh, no, not here. I'll put you on my prayer list. There is no reason to say we can pray right now because that may be the very moment that it's needed the most. Amen. God wants to move in our hearts and lives. Amen. There is coming a day when no heart makes shelter, no more clouds in the sky, no more
Yes. about what a day that will be I feel glorious right here Amen. if it's better up there pray for me that I get there amen amen, amen. praise the Lord back in the back there If we're not careful, what's going to happen? It'd be okay if we just turn loose a little bit. It'd be okay if we raise our hands without somebody saying, praise your hand. It'd be okay if we shout just a little bit. It's time we stood up for God Almighty and let the Holy Spirit just come in and fill us and then do what the Holy Spirit would have us do. I love that song. What a day. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. No, I dislike you, Randy. That was Mom's favorite song. As long as she had breath, she was going crazy. And that she surely did. I love her. I miss her. But you know what? She's breathing a whole lot better than what she ever. I love being home. I love seeing church family. Just, I love the Lord. Amen. 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 I had a, even though I was, in charge of people, I still had a responsibility to take care of things. And there was a power outage. And there's a, a telescopic pole that I had to use to, to change the fuses on a cutout that was up on the telephone pole that controlled transformers. And it was raining. I mean, it was raining cats and dogs. And because it was raining so hard in order to do what I had to do, I had to take my glasses off. And I asked the Lord, I said, help me to do this. 7,200 volts was hanging down from that fuse holder. I took that telescopic pole, reached up, brought it, brought it down, walked up to the shop, got a replacement fuse, brought it back down, raised it up in the rain. I mean, it was still raining. Got it up to where it was at the point of snapping it in to its fuse holder. And I asked the Lord, I said, help me to do this. I don't know if I'm going to survive or not. I raise that fuse holder to the point and I snapped it in as quick as I could. Well, I'm still here today. <laughs> so he answered my prayer. Amen. <laughs> I loved that job. It was, it was a good job. I worked for the, for the county, nineteen and a half years, and the, the state, twenty-one and a half years. 
but during that state jo job, there were many, many close calls. And I'm telling you something, the Lord has protected me and rescued my life I don't know how many times. I love him. I love him. Not just because I'm still alive. I love him because I'm going home. <laughs> Praise his holy name. Praise Amen. his holy name. Thank you. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God, God helps us, watches over us more times than we realize. I just said, wait till the rain stops. answers you need to thank him and I've been praying for a popcorn service and this morning each testimony has been such a blessing I thought you know I was able to in June last month I was able to go to Greece with my daughter on vacation a place I probably thought I'd never get to go and it was a beautiful place I got to walk in some of the places that Apostle Paul walked and that was exciting but you know what I thought this morning as I sat here in the service and I watched Everybody worship God, hands raised, shouting. You know, there's nothing more beautiful than that. I'm so thankful that God led me here and that you all are my church family. If you all pray for me, that I'll be what he'd have me to be. Amen. 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 We are a family. Amen. Well, turn to your neighbor and tell them they look good. Sue, come over here, Joe. We got Sue. I'm glad you had a knee replacement. <laughs> I don't do this very often, but I, I really feel like I have to stand and thank the Lord. Um, this old woman. <laughs> uh, things have happened so fast in my life that I just want to thank the Lord for it. Eight months ago, I got married again. I never thought that would ever happen. And within uh, eight months now, we have sold two houses <laughs> without ever putting a sign in our yard and bought another house. And I just want to thank the Lord because he's, I know he's answered all those prayers. I couldn't have done it without him. And then last week, <clears throat> I went to sleep driving and I know the Lord was there and took care of me of course Roger woke me up <laughs> he said where are you going and I was headed over a hill and I just want to thank the Lord for protecting us keeping us safe right. and uh, for allowing us to begin a new place a new home and he's just been so good to me I want to thank him this morning amen bless you Sue amen God does care about those things of life. Every detail. Pastor Randy, I'm just sitting here looking around. Because I'm one of the oldies here. I was raised when I went to church when it was up Elk, uh, up Newhouse Drive. And seen the things that's happened through the years and the blessings that's happened. But I remember down on Elk River, and boy, that was a prayer thing. We had people get to shouting and praying. And I wasn't, wasn't that old. But I can remember some of them that were just jumping all over the place. I thought, I could never do that. But I found myself do that a couple times. But you know, I'm so thankful for our church. Yeah. For we just think about where it's come from in different places. But the people that come here, a lot of I don't even know. Just see them going. But I just give him praise for all he's done. Amen. And I love him and give him thanks. Amen. Bless you, Bob. Bless you, Bob. Yep. 
my heart has been really heavy the past week between having surgery and losing two close friends of mine um, this week. And I've been praying from Reverend that the Holy Spirit just gives you the strength when you don't even know the words to speak. I've had so much happen this week. I've been praying that prayer and I walk in here to my church family and every song had been filled with the Spirit and put on my heart. And he let me know, Wanda, I'm here. I'm here. They're here. And you're not alone. And I don't know what I would do with him losing, losing Granny. If you all knew Terry from Harding, she was a very special woman to me. She taught me a lot of things, how to cook, how to clean, how to be a woman. And he sends us the things that we need right when we need them. And I just want to give him praise for that. And I love you guys. Amen. Amen. In a lot of ways, this is all very, very new to me, my, my relationship with God. Uh, I've been in church most of my life, but only in the last nine, ten months of I had a personal relationship with God. But it it brought to light so many things that I, I just never even realized throughout my life. And uh, half of my life uh, I've been afflicted with, with, with heart disease and, and just had so many different surgeries and been on a heart transplant list twice and uh, told again in November that that I, I needed a heart transplant and was told by uh, my heart surgeon what an amazement I was uh, through God that uh, there was no reason why I was even alive, period. Uh, my arteries and my heart are 100% plugged up. Uh, They've pretty well been real close to that for 30, 31 years. And I just never give any credit to God for any of that. But he just healed my heart over and over and over again. When I was 34 years old, one third of my heart was totally dead. To this day, that one third of my heart is alive. All, all glory to God that He's the great physician. Uh, and Dr. Godel also went on, on to say after he said, uh, No reason for me to be alive, he said, and you're up walking the halls, you shouldn't be able to even walk, period. Uh, I'm not going to have a heart transplant. I'm, I'm going to go to my grave w w with the heart that God gave me. He somehow figures out a way to, to, to make what I have work. I am literally working six, seven hours a day out in the heat. I mean, working like I did when I was 30 years old. And that totally amazes me. But that's all God. That, that, that's not me. That's God. And uh, so I, I don't know that any... And, and I just never, never, ever gave God the credit. 
for all that to, to get me through all these years and, and, and all the surgeries and so forth that I've gone through. And, and in some ways I'm embarrassed of that fact, but that just shows us that God loves us regardless of, of who or what we are that he'll, he'll stand with us, he'll stand behind us, or do, do whatever it takes to, to support us in, in what we need. And I, I just thank him so much for all Amen. that. Amen. Bless you, Kevin. Amen. 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 I just want to thank the Lord. He's with me through all the ups and downs. The last eight years has been pretty rough, um, but he's been there. I've lost a stepchild. I had a major surgery. I was told I had cancer, got a miracle, praise the Lord. My dad's diagnosis with Lewy body, having to watch him go through that, and mom. Losing my brother, now losing my Colbert, who was my son. But you know, through it all, he has been there. He has kept me out of the bed. He has kept me out of the pit through it all. And I love him so much. Amen. Give me the key to E flat, would you? Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow there have been times I didn't know right from wrong but in every situation God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. That's why I sing through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in my God. Through mountains and I even thank him for the valleys I thank him for all the storms he's brought me through for if if I'd never had a problem oh I would know that my God can solve them I'd never know what real faith in God could do singing through it all through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God Upon his 
all God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Joe, would you come and share with us? When I first heard of Jesus, his love and his grace, my heart was overwhelmed to think a king would take my place. I cried, Lord, I'll go with you every step of the way. That's all that I can do. I dare to repay I love him too much to fail him now too much to break my vow for I promised the Lord that I would make it somehow and now I told him I loved him it was easy to say but harder to prove it when temptation came my way for what good are broken promises I counted them but lost when I caught a glimpse of real love hanging on a rugged cross. Now the years have drawn us closer. My love for him has grown. Each step has brought me nearer to my eternal home. And I'm just too close to heaven to turn. His grace will be sufficient. I'm gonna make it somehow. I love him too much to fail him now. Too much to break my vow. For I promise the Lord that I would make him. Somehow, and now I love him too much. Oh, yes, I love him too much. Oh, yes, I love him too much to fail him now. And thank you, Jim. If you would just play quietly for just a moment, would you bow your heads? Testimonies have been about the love of God. Some who have told of the many years that they've served him faithfully. I'm not gonna preach the message that I had this morning, but I want you to hear the scripture. With heads bowed, just listening to the words. It's found in Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They ask, where did he get all of this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? But then they scoffed. 
He's just a carpenter. He's the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon. And his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Jesus spoke and told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and even his own family. And because of their unbelief, I want you to hear that. Because of the unbelief, he could not do any miracles among them except to place his hand on a few sick people and to heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus left and went from village to village teaching the people. You see, we can come week after week since the Spirit hear the message of the Lord hear Scripture but if we don't believe we're pushing him aside what about those struggles that you've been going through what about those things that have been obstacles in your relationship with others and even with Jesus? Has your unbelief kept you from being touched by Jesus? You see, the scripture said there were a few who believed and he healed those few. But those who scoffed and just said, oh, you're just Mary's son. didn't believe he was the Messiah missed a blessing missed the power of God maybe you're saying today God really doesn't care about my situation maybe you're even feeling like Jesus that you're being pushed aside and rejected. Jesus knew that he had done all that he could do in his own hometown. He knew that he was giving all that he had, but yet they wouldn't choose to believe. chosen to believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you chosen to believe in Jesus for whatever situation you're facing in relationships, financially, health-wise, whatever the case may be, emotionally? Are you choosing to believe in him or are you walking in unbelief that God doesn't care about my situation? Are you walking in unbelief that I'm not worthy for God to help me? His grace is amazing and it's available. With your heads continue to be bowed in an attitude of prayer, would you search your heart this morning? Would you consider finding a place of prayer around these altars? There's nothing special about the wood that this is made out of. He loves you. Don't let your unbelief keep you 
from the blessing of Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. was blind, but now I see. Are you being obedient? Twas grace that taught my heart to feel, and grace Verse, are you being obedient? Amazing grace, how sweet. Do you know you can find a place of prayer this morning? That's it. To commit your unbelief and allow it to be changed into belief. He promises to meet with us. Father, we come into your presence even now, thanking you. Lord, help us to put aside our spirit of unbelief. <clears throat> it may not be that we say it. It may just be an attitude. It may just be in a way that we truly don't believe within the depths of our heart that you are who you say you are. It could be that we're not trusting you for our situation of life. And we want to believe with all that we are in all that you are, our Savior, our Lord, our healer, our provider, our comfort, our guide. Help us, Lord, in our unbelief that when you see us, you know that our hearts are in complete tune with you, that we are not going to limit you by our own mind or our own thinking, that we are going to allow you to work in your powerful ways not in the ways that we think or we plan, but in surrender to you. Thank you, Lord. Hear the cries of the heart around the altar and throughout the sanctuary this morning. You know us. Thank you for who you are. Hear the cries. Meet the needs. Receive us as your son or daughter. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand and sing that? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound.
Jesus is when we people said amen amen Amen. praise the lord remain standing for just a moment i want to remind you that this evening we will have service at six o'clock and this evening will be um alan jones first sermon for us sharing at six o'clock i encourage you to be here and be a part of that pastor jason has an announcement for us and uh, then we'll have our benediction We have the uh, teens that are going to church camp. We want to pray for you. Uh, we have several going this, uh, this week. That means you have to move back there, boys. Any other time, they're, they're moving everywhere. Aren't you thankful for church camp and the opportunity that we have to send these to camp? And if you just have a kneel right here at the, at the altar and... Uh, Just pray that God's spirit would move in that camp. Amen. Middle schoolers, God bless the workers. (laughs) We've got good kids, and uh, we look forward to hearing what God is going to do in their lives. Lord, we pray for these young men and others who will be going to church camp this week. I pray, Father, that uh, you would give them and watch over them and protect them and keep them safe during this uh, adventure. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you would begin to open their hearts and their eyes to see you in a more personal way. Watch over those who will be counselors and speakers. and, And we pray, Lord, that you would bless them as they travel, bless them as uh, they uh, hear the word of God. May they apply it to their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I don't know if I told you, Pastor Sean's going to close in just a moment, but I don't know if I told you, I'm old, I can't remember. Uh, They didn't get in from the Costa Rica trip until three this morning into the the motel. Uh, It was supposed to be a direct flight from Costa Rica to Charlotte. They took a diversion to Miami to go through customs. And um, we will say that there was one holdup. Um, that would be Jeff Bogus. Are we surprised? Um, he and about three others that were on the flight were stopped by U.S. security. Uh, just uh, ended up being just a routine check. He didn't have any contraband. He didn't have anything he wasn't supposed to have. So, but you can give him a hard time when they get back. They should be traveling on their way back. And uh, I've I've heard the reports of wonderful things that God did in their time together. And you're a part of that because you have prayed, because you have given uh, toward this project. And we look forward to to hearing from them. Pastor Sean, would you commission it? Yes. Whether it's going to be in a split second or whether you're going to have time to lay there and talk to God, we don't know. You know, I had one uh, open heart surgery in 1998, and my brother Bob called me, and I know what he was asking me over the phone. Joanne, are you all right? No, I wasn't, but I wasn't going to talk to him about it because I was running from it. And I was going into open heart surgery next day. And I went into open heart surgery not knowing whether I would go to heaven or hell. But God seen me through it. Then in, 19, in 2021, God decided to put me in open heart again. But you know, this time I knew 
that when I was going to go into surgery, if God decided that was the time to take me home, I was ready to go. But you know, sitting right here on this seat a few months ago, my heart stopped. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. That morning I got up and I told Danny, I said, you go on to church, I'll watch it on thing. I just don't feel like going this morning. And then all of a sudden the devil said, boy, I got you on that one. Anything to keep you from going. And you can ask Danny. I looked right straight at him and I said, honey, wait a minute. Give me time to get ready to go. I'm going to church. I sat right there and my heart stopped. And had I not been there, Dr. Goad looked me right in the face and he said, Joanne, your husband would have come home and found you dead. God took care of me then, but my heart stopped right there. And had I not had that chance for somebody to bring that heart back and make it start beating again, I would not have had a chance to call on God because I didn't know it was happening. Too many people in this world think that they've got another day, another minute, another hour. But we don't know when God is going to stop your heart and it's over. And there's not going to be no chance. And you might be one of those that look and say, let me give my family some wisdom. Get your heart right with God because it could be any time. Our lives each day, in every moment, even though our faith is tested, let our hearts stay true. And may his blessings, power, and grace be always with you through it all, even in the Velveeta Isle. In Jesus' name, amen.